Okay, today I'm going to show you how to cover a, a drum shell so it looks like this. This is one I've already done. I covered it with 1960s um, Black Strata Pearl that I got from Precision Drum Company up in New York. And I'm going to do the same thing with this shell here. This is a uh, 1996 Ludwig Classic shell of 14 by 22. And I actually already started the process because on bass drums, it's a two-piece process to cover the shell. You cover the bottom first, and you'll notice I left the uh, protective coating on. And then you come back and put the other part on. And the goal here is to have the seam along where the lugs will be. So there's about a two inch gap here between where the lugs are and where the seam gets covered on both sides. So when I make a new piece to go around here, it's going to cover over these about two inches. And so that's what I'm gonna do next, to show you how to cut the material and then apply it to the drum. Okay, one thing I forgot to show you earlier was that when you put on this bottom piece, you're gonna end up peeling back the protective layer and you're gonna feather and blend this plastic right along the, the bearing surface. And you do that using a file and I'll show you how to do that in another video. But um, it's important that you do that so that this drum will sit down flat. I've moved it to a really flat surface. It's a countertop. The reason I did that <clears throat> is because I'm gonna take the new material, which I buy in bulk, and, or you can buy it pre-cut, and I buy it in bulk, and I want to wrap it around and see how it matches and see if I need to maybe flip the material a different direction. So that right there looks one way. I might just flip it around here and see how this looks. That actually kind of looks better. See it kind of matches. So I'm going to, at this point, take a small clamp and move this back about two inches, just approximately. This is only for purposes of cutting the uh, material along here. Then I'm gonna bring it around this way, pull it somewhat taut, clamp it on this side, and this will allow me to mark it and make sure it's flush all the way down, which it is. And it seems to match reasonably well on this side as well. Okay, so next I'm gonna do is mark it. Okay, I'm gonna mark the material and I wanna be careful and not leave too much above because I'm gonna use this material to wrap another drum. So I don't wanna waste material. So I'm gonna take a colored marker that can be seen against this particular color material and I'm going to go around it, making a marking line so that I can cut it with some scissors. So what I'll do is now I'll take this off and cut it with scissors. Okay, now I'm gonna start cutting. Um, if you'll notice the protective side is down and we leave it on. And the reason I wanna be careful here is because I wanna use this for a nine by 13 riding tom-tom. And if we look here, if I cut along the line I just made, we have about nine and a half inches, so we have plenty of room to use this leftover material for the riding tom-tom. You could use it for an eight by 12 as well. And then we wanna make sure we're on the correct side. So this is the side that's gonna go around the bass drum. So we wanna cut a little bit to the right of the marking line that I just made. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm using some real sharp scissors and I'm gonna leave a little bit of extra material that I'll be cutting off with an X-Acto knife once I put this onto the bass drum. So my goal is to end up with probably a quarter of an inch or more of material sticking up over the edge of the bass drum when I get this all cut out. OK, 
Okay, so here's my material I'm going to use for my riding tom-tom. And now I'm going to check to see how I did. And do I have enough material? Yes, I did fine. I have a little bit of material sticking over the edge. So what I'll do is once I do glue this down is I'll come in with an X-Acto knife and I'll remove this material and then I'll feather it in with a, with a bastard file. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, before I do that though, I have to find where the lugs are and I have to make it so the seam is going to be right there. And then on the other side, I have to mark it where the lugs are and I have to remove off this excess amount of material. So we're going to end up having a two inch gap here and over on the other side that, are, that goes underneath this top layer. So I'm going to have to measure that out and cut it and I'll do that in a second. Okay, I'm ready now to measure and cut this second piece that goes on the bass drum. So what I already did was I already actually clamped it down onto the bass drum so it's kind of taut against the, the uh, wood. And if you look, what I did was I use a straight edge or a ruler to kind of give me a rough guide here uh, and I made a mark. This was the original seam. It was slightly over to the right. I'm going to move mine slightly to the left so that it's more in line with the centers of, these, um, of the lugs where the, the lugs bolt on. So I have this already set up over here and I've pulled it taut all the way around, all the way around here. And now what I need to do is make a mark over here that is similar. So if I take a straight edge and put it in here, and if I hold this plastic correctly, and take my marker, I can make a mark right there that lets me know where I need to cut it. Before I do this final cut, because once you cut it, it's done so that you, know, you don't have a second redo on it. And this material is very expensive. It's over $100 a sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tape measure and measure around from mark to mark. Then I'm going to measure the length on here and make sure that it's somewhat the same. Then I'm going to use a framing square to get the mark straight down this seam here. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, I'm going to um, just recheck my measurements so that I don't make any mistakes in my cutting. So if I go over here to where I marked the original seam, I put a little line inside the bass drum where the original seam was. And if I come all the way around here to my other mark, which is right here, I show about 49 inches. And so I just want to make sure that the mark that I placed on my material is approximately the same. And I measured it at about 48 inches. So I'm just going to recheck to make sure I have everything exactly correct before I start cutting. So to do that, I'm just going to simply go back over here. Put this on the seam where the original seam mark was. Pull it tight. And I see that I may need to adjust it slightly. So that's what I'll do. It's a little bit, needs to be a little bit longer than what it was. So I'll make a slight adjustment. It doesn't have to be perfectly precise. Just has to be pretty close. So this will be my new mark. And I'll cut using this new mark. So what I'm going to do is use a framing square. Since this is uneven, because I cut this already by hand, I'm going to use the bottom to get my correct measurement using a framing square. So I'm going to pick up a framing square, bring it over here and see if I can properly align it such that I can mark it. I want to make sure this edge is exactly straight along the bottom. So that looks good. So what I'm going to do is hold this down tight. 
mark this with a marker that I can see. In this case, I'm using orange. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut this with scissors as straight as I can because it's going to end up being the actual seam. Okay, this should come out pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to check it now by taking the material, putting it back over here, aligning up the first seam, hold it taut, and look at my second seam. It's actually a little bit too long. So I can just trim it up by marking it again and trimming. It's always better to be long than short. So like I said, you can't, uh, you can't lengthen it once you've cut it. So I'm just wanting to cut just a slight bit off because I'm a perfectionist. I want it to be as perfect as possible. Okay, so I'm holding this down tight. I'm going to remark this again. Actually, it's on my original mark. So now I'm going to cut this and I'll recheck my work. This kind of actually makes it easier. Okay, that looks pretty straight. So let's see how we did. Okay, that looks good over here. And it looks good over here. So I have it exactly where I need it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, fold back this material over here and tape it down and get this ready for